Great, thanks, Megan. Um, thank you all for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us today for our webinar. Uh, before we got too far into this, I wanted to give you a little bit of a background of myself to, and also to put a face to the voice in the informatics industry uh, and informatics expert for well over 25 years at this point. And I've had uh, experience and expertise developed over time in a variety of different type of uh, solutions, uh, including lab information systems, electronic lab notebooks, lab execution systems, chromatography data systems, scientific data management systems, clinical systems, and a whole variety of other research type of uh, informatics systems out that are out there. So the alphabet soup, which is very confusing, to a lot of people, something that is very second nature to me, and I do tend to sometimes use these these terms, uh, and I don't tend to explain them all that well, and I'll try to remember to do so, hopefully. Uh, somebody will kick me along the way if I forget to uh, explain what a term is. But part of the day today is going to be going and explaining what these different systems are, LIMS, ELN, and LES, and explaining the differences. So uh, from an industry point of view, I've also had the privilege and uh, honor to work in a number of different types of industries and visit types of laboratories, all different types of laboratories, QA and QC and R&D all over the world, uh, including chemical and petrochemical and pharma, and some of the specialty genomics, proteomics, and, and other type of laboratories, analytical services labs all over the world. QC, R&D, as well as I've learned and, and absorbed different processes and workflows that different laboratories use and become an expert in data flow and information flow. And along the way, I've got an extensive experience in talking about computers and networks and systems and databases and oh, balancing and all kinds of things like that. And so it's all come together inside of a whole informatics expertise. And way back in the dark ages, I did have it on my doctorate in analytical chemistry. So I do understand the science, the IT, the informatics, and, and I'll be able to hopefully answer any one of your questions. And if not, I'll let you know that I don't, and I'll get you the answer later on. So to make sure that we are all on the same page today, uh, the agenda that you're going to have uh, is going to have an overview of LIMS, uh, where we'll talk about uh, the actual uh, systems, what they do, what they're used for, the marketplace. Uh, same thing for electronic lab notebooks or ELNs. And we'll do the same thing for laboratory execution systems. Uh, then we're going to talk about sort of the collision, the, con the, the confluence of LIMS and ELNs and LESs and how they're sort of blending together and what story with that is. Uh, we'll also give you a little bit of information about how you go about choosing your solution. And here I say solution, it's not system. It could be a multiple uh, systems that make up your solution. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about how you plan for success, summarize, and leave time over at the end for questions and answers. So let's get started. So laboratory information management systems, the LIM system, the granddaddy of them all. So these started and debuted probably in the 1960s or so as custom solutions primarily. And I actually remember those days, uh, so uh, a little bit after that, I guess, uh, uh, when people started actually providing uh, LIM solutions that were totally custom. By the 1980s, and uh, things have changed from being totally custom bespoke systems in the LIMS world to commercial off the shelf. That's what COTS usually stands for, although there's some debate. Some people would say that it's configurable off the shelf software. Uh, I happen to like uh, commercial off the shelf is my definition, is what I use. So COTS limbs were primarily available in the 1980s, and they were primarily general purpose limbs, meaning they're used for any kind of laboratory. Uh, and then, of course, along the same time frame, they started getting very specialized solutions. We'll show you, uh, I'll give you some examples of some specialized limbs in a few minutes. The marketplace for limbs, uh, in a global point of view, is about $680 million. In 2017, it has a 7.3 percent compounded annual gross rate of growth, uh, and that should be going on through 2021. The main industries that are driving this growth are the life sciences um, and biobanks, research institutes, CROs, and CMOs. <clears throat> we talked about it a few seconds ago, or actually, yeah, a few, yeah, a few seconds ago, uh, the, from the generic world, and started getting into specialized areas. It branched out more and more. And as science changes, you'll be surprised. You wouldn't be surprised that there's a new limbs comes out for that coming up right away. So, biobanking and biorepositories for chemical QC is traditional, environmental, agricultural, pathology, toxicology, toxicology. So, all these different types of limbs actually have had specialty types of capabilities built into them, so that you now have these uh, sort of starting points and systems that are designed specifically for those areas. They do great in those areas, but they don't necessarily work in all areas. So the general purpose limbs are still very popular and used today. 
Traditional limbs, and this is where we try and get into what the differences are. Okay, this is what people can get confused about. They hear the terms, they're not sure what's what, and this is not so much in the limbs world, but in the electronic lab notebook and laboratory execution systems, people don't understand the differences that much. But in the limbs world, the main thing you need to talk about, and when you're looking at limbs versus ELN or limbs versus LES, is how it's focused. Right? So a limbs is traditionally focused on samples or logical groups of samples, like a batch or a run. Right? And the main functionality that you're going to find inside of a limbs is for the management and running of a laboratory and laboratory operation. And that's driven by samples flowing through the laboratory in what's called a standard sample workflow, which involves logging in the samples to your, to your laboratory, registering them somehow or, send, or sanctioning them, as, as some people call it. Then once it gets in, having it show up at a laboratory and accept it that's there, assign uh, specifications to it, test to it. Uh, of course, specifications wouldn't be in an R&D environment, but in a uh, most QC environments, you would have specifications. Tests, limits, then you would go ahead and do your testing, enter your results, have the calculations done for you, do your analyses, do your reports, and archive information. So that's a standard type of flow that you would have inside of a sample, inside of a laboratory, which is mimicked inside of most limb systems, commercial limb systems. So the type of functionality you get is all associated with that, sample login and management, sample test uh, and sample and test result entry in both uh, doing the sample as well as batching, manual entry of results, instrument interfacing is also capabilities, reporting and barcoding, data trend analysis. All these things are focused around that life cycle, the standard functionality. Over time, other functionality became standard inside of LIMS. Some of these are extra added items, um, meaning extra cost items. Things like instrument calibration and maintenance is often a functionality that is offered inside of a traditional limbs, but can cost you extra, so you have to be careful of that. We'll talk about the total cost of ownership later on. Um, being able to have um, inventory management, another sort of add-on capability, but other capabilities for task and event scheduling, inventory management, uh, for um, workflow management, all became part of limb systems. So standard functionality has grown over time, and hence you also have some of this expansion into other areas.